Well, that's how propaganda works. It's a series of suggestions and over time with the repetition, things get locked into our mind. And it's not really a suggestion when at the same time, we're essentially told we're gonna die if we don't take the suggestion. So it's more like a psychological gun pointed at our head where the suggestion is do this or you're gonna die. Obviously the fear is not accidental. It is seeded through the indoctrination. Hello, welcome to the Sobriety Bestie podcast. My name is Kirsten and I am so excited you are here today as we kick off this brand new series about addiction science. So today specifically, we are going to be looking at how cult indoctrination mirrors addiction. If you were indoctrinated into a cult-like system or a cult religion, including Alcoholics Anonymous, then you know what it feels like to leave, the withdrawal to leave, right? If you've left the group. And so for me, it did feel like there was a major withdrawal or some people are calling it a vacuum in the comments under my videos. And so let's dive into this experience of being indoctrinated and how we can become addicted to these groups, including Alcoholics Anonymous. So I was in AA for 10 years and I left five years ago. I am still deconstructing. It was a surprise to me this year to realize I had more deconstructing to do. I did the brunt of my deconstruction work the first year after I left AA, but more was revealed and there was more freedom available for me. People say that leaving AA felt like withdrawal it's not just an emotional process, although it is emotional in cult psychology that's called exit trauma. It's also neurological. For a lot of us, our world falls apart when we leave a high control system or a cult religion like Alcoholics Anonymous. And that's what we're going to be diving into today. Because these high control systems like AA, they don't just change what we believe. They rewire how we process our identity, safety, connection, pain. We have deep fears and guilt and shame installed in us. There's a lot of fears in Alcoholics Anonymous that we get indoctrinated into. Today, we're going to look at how the indoctrination could mirror addiction and why it can feel very hard to leave a high control group or a cult or a cult religion. Let's start with the dopamine driven reinforcement. Cults, including AA, use both predictable and intermittent rewards to activate dopamine, the brain's motivation and pleasure chemical. Examples from AA are getting approval, like when people say that was a great share, or I really got a lot out of what you said today, or any sort of approval within the group. Maybe it's from your sponsor or an old timer or a newcomer. You get a sense of belonging. So we're one of the crew now, we're in the middle of the boat, we fit in, we feel like we're a part of something. It very much has that us against them mentality. So we're in here, Alkies and out there is the normies, but all cult dynamics have this us against them mentality. There's the certainty, of course, that is a huge reinforcement. So you're exactly where you're supposed to be. You have a plan mapped out for you. You know the nature of what's going on with you, right? You have this fatal progressive disease and you have your spiritual program of action that's going to solve your problem of alcoholism with your daily reprieve. I'm doing little air quotes on all of that because I don't believe any of that anymore, but I believed all of that when I was in the AA cult religion. And so the certainty does give us a benefit neurologically or biochemically from having that certainty that we are in the right place. We are the only way we are doing the right thing. We are saving lives, all of that kind of stuff. Then there's the identity. So when we have the identity of I'm an alcoholic and we belong to the group, I'm an alcoholic. I'm always going to be an alcoholic. The identity level is so deep. It plays into our core. All of these things hit our feel good, our dopamine center in our brain. And over time, our brain is linking obedience with safety. Let's look at what the science says. Performing rituals in the group setting releases dopamine and creates a trance-like dissociative state. When repeated often enough, these behaviors become habitual, bypassing critical thinking and activating compulsion. 
The reward circuit's hyperactivation via dopamine is central in both substance and behavioral addiction, especially in systems with emotional salience and social feedback. These hijack the nucleus accumbens just like in drugs. All right, next let's look at withdrawal when you question or leave the group. Leaving AA can feel like withdrawal symptoms, especially emotionally, socially, neurologically, biochemically. <laughs> emotionally, it might look like panic, anxiety, fear, guilt, fear that you're going to drink, fear that you're going to die, fear that no one's going to talk to you, fear that you'll get shunned. Well, that's reality. <laughs> guilt if you talk, guilt that you left, guilt that you're not helping the newcomer anymore, guilt that maybe you're doing something wrong, shame something is wrong with you. The social bit is the exclusion, the ghosting, the lack of community. Most of us who leave get shunned by most of the people inside the rooms. It's not personal. We know this. It feels personal. It is actually just part of the ideology that if you leave, you're unsafe, essentially, that you're on your way to jail, institution, or death. When people are in the group, they fear that it feels dangerous and unsafe to talk to you. Literally feels dangerous in their nervous systems. So they're choosing their own safety that they got instilled in them from the ideology over the connection. So it was really about protecting the system, AA, and the ideology living in their heads versus the connection with the individual. Also, we have the identity. So if I'm not an alcoholic, who am I? If AA isn't true, then what is my entire worldview? It's quite unsettling, disorienting to leave an ideology that you realize is not true. It really shakes things up and it can activate a lot of critical thinking. And I hope that's what it's activating if you've left AA. To me, critical thinking has been the biggest like gift. <laughs> not even a gift the biggest one of the things i'm like the most stoked about from leaving aa is the activation reactivation of my critical thinking and really thinking through all sides of things instead of just taking what i'm told and aa everyone like the aas will tend to say like in the comments it's all a suggestion i'm like yeah well that's how propaganda works it's a series of suggestions and over time with the repetition things get locked into our mind and it's not really a suggestion when at the same time, we're essentially told we're gonna die if we don't take the suggestion. So it's more like a psychological gun pointed at our head where the suggestion is do this or you're gonna die. Obviously the fear is not accidental. It is seeded through the indoctrination. The fear does help some of us not drink, but it keeps us stuck in, in the system as well. It keeps us limiting ourselves and our lives and clinging to an outdated ideology instead of looking at modern science, which for some people can be deadly. We're often told if we stop going to meetings that we're going to relapse and die. We're told that our disease is in the parking lot doing push-ups. We're essentially told that our disease is getting stronger so that if we leave, it's gonna be worse and our disease wants us dead. Now let's just point out that it's not even agreed upon by all the medical people that we even have a disease. And in my opinion, there is no disease. It's a great metaphor, <laughs> but it's not a reality. These triggers activate cortisol, our brain's stress hormone. This fuels anxiety and fight or flight. And science confirms this. Withdrawal from behavioral addiction mirrors the stress reactivity and HPA access dysregulation seen in substance addiction. Now let's look at intermittent reinforcement and trauma bonding. I've noticed that people casually use trauma bonding to describe when people are discussing trauma with each other, as is typical inside AA meetings, shares, step work, all of the things, right? You bond over your shared traumas or any traumas. That's not how trauma bonding is defined medically or psychologically. So trauma bonding has to do with the intermittent reinforcements, like in gambling, where you never know when you're gonna get the positive reward or the negative reward. And so it creates an addiction-like feeling inside of our brains. And how this happens in AA, we don't always feel good. And that could even be part of the point. It's what hooks us. So one week we're praised for our honesty, another week we're shamed for questioning the program, and then the next week we are applauded, and then the next week we are punished and shamed. Did you ever experience anything like that? 
where it was inconsistent whether you were praised or punished by your behavior within Alcoholics Anonymous. This intermittent reinforcement, trauma bonding, it is the same mechanism that casinos use to trap gamblers. It's also, hint, hint, we're gonna dive into this in future videos, what is happening to hijack people's attention on TikTok and social media in general, but specifically TikTok. Now let's look at the science. The cult rewards new members sporadically, conditioning them to perform and obey even without consistent positive feedback. This is the same psychological mechanism used in gambling addiction. Trains, this uncertainty wires the brain to chase reward despite pain, forming the exact loop that creates the trauma bond. Pain, relief, pain, hope for relief again, loyalty. And now let's look at how identity fusion equals neurological compulsion. In AA, you don't just attend, you become a permanent member, an alcoholic. That's the indoctrination. So there's mantras like, my best thinking nearly killed me, my best thinking got me here, you can't trust your own thinking, I'm powerless over alcohol, powerless over people, places, and things, it works if you work it, <laughs> live and let live, let go and let God. So there's all the things that are happening inside Alcoholics Anonymous. Essentially, these are thought stoppers and repeated over time, they override our prefrontal cortex where we have reason and autonomy and they fuse our identity with the system, the AA ideology. Now let's look at the science. In high control groups, emotional logic overrides personal logic. Identity becomes entangled with obedience, causing internal conflict if you question the group. On social media addiction, found the same structural decline. The prefrontal cortex becomes less active as compulsive behavior increases, making it harder to choose autonomy over ideology. Now let's look at how rituals can become self-soothing addictions. It frames its rituals as spiritual tools or principles of the program, but functionally, they serve as compulsive emotional regulation behaviors. They help to regulate our emotions. And here's what it might specifically look like in Alcoholics Anonymous. We're told to go to meetings to get out of our head or to help a newcomer to get out of our head, calling somebody else for relief, sponsoring somebody for relief, calling a sponsee for relief, repeating slogans to silence doubt, praying to a God of our understanding or a doorknob <laughs> for clarity or for relief or for freedom. Each behavior has a neurochemical hit. Something is happening inside of our brain. Chemicals, hormones are being released that are giving us certain feels that we can become accustomed to, addicted to, when the self-soothing continues over time. So anticipation and relief, dopamine. Group bonding, oxytocin. Emotional dulling, endorphins. Let's look at the science. Repetition of rituals reduces stress and rewards compliance, creating a habit loop. Over time, the brain becomes dependent on these behaviors to regulate emotion. This is addiction without the chemical. Behavioral addictions activate the same neural circuitry as substances with the added layer of social bonding, emotional regulation, and identity protection. Yes, you can get addicted to Alcoholics Anonymous because the cult indoctrination mimics addiction at every level. It rewards compliance with dopamine. It punishes questioning with fear, with silencing, with shunning, with the cold shoulder, not getting replied to. If someone just doesn't respond to you, like your sponsor or whoever, because you're questioning something about the program, we can get shunned. It fuses our identity with the group. It gives rituals to us that can regulate our emotions. And for some of us, when we leave AA, we will experience the withdrawals. I know that I did. I heard in cult psychology, it's called exit trauma. I certainly had a lot of emotions when I left Alcoholics Anonymous. And part of it was because I wasn't getting my daily reprieve anymore because I was having a biochemical experience inside the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, not because of the reasons why they say I did, <laughs> but because I was actually connecting with people. I was feeling seen and heard. I was being of service. I was believing all this nonsensical baloney and just the thoughts and the feelings and being immersed in it all was giving me a biochemical experience that stopped my thoughts 
that medicated my emotions, did all sorts of stuff. I was being regulated by the group. That's not recovery. That's codependency. That's an addiction. Honestly, the way that I think about it now, I don't look at like addiction is bad as like a binary thing. I look at it as every human brain has the potential to become addicted to many different things. When I first got to AA, I thought of it as I'm supposed to get rid of all my addictions. So I got sober, I quit drinking alcohol, I got off the benzos, and then six months sober, I quit smoking cigarettes. And then slowly, 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 I was doing the steps again and again and again, thinking about what else am I doing addictively? What can I give up? I don't see it that way anymore. I don't judge it that way anymore. I think that some addictions, if they're not really causing that much harm, might serve us at certain seasons of our lives. Maybe being distracted while something else is going on that's really painful in our life actually is okay. In a lot of ways, I feel like alcohol saved my life because I was having a real hard time with life when I was in high school. And when I found alcohol, I feel like it saved me. So at that time, it was what I needed to get through. So I don't hold the same shame. I don't know. I guess I've just deprogrammed from recovery culture a lot or deconstructed it. And a lot of the way I was told the way that it is by in rehab or in Alcoholics Anonymous or even in society, I just don't see it that way anymore. So how do you see it? For me, I just feel more open now. I feel less rigid now in how I think about addictions in general. What do you think? Do you see how cult indoctrination mirrors addiction? Did you feel like you've been addicted to a group? Were you addicted to Alcoholics Anonymous? Meaning, was it giving you benefit? When you left, did you struggle, whether it was emotionally, spiritually, socially, or whatever? Was there what felt like a withdrawal period? What helped you get through that, if that's true for you? I think it's a lot of our stories. I know it can be very difficult for a lot of us to leave AA. And part of that in my view, has to do with the fact that the biochemical experience that we're walking away from. It's also one heck of a mind F, isn't it? <laughs> to leave AA and to realize you're believing a bunch of hogwash and living by it as if it's true. Otherwise, you're going to be dead. Ah, oh, namaste, namaste. So we're going to continue this series about addiction science with some videos. Next, we'll explore in this series videos about TikTok addiction and comparing that to alcohol addiction. I got some fun stuff coming up on this specific series here. So there is lots to look forward to. Also, I have a lot of fun stuff below, linked below, a lot of free ways to move forward with my guidance and a lot of paid online courses as well. So there's plenty of stuff down there if you want to poke around and see if something vibes with you. <sighs> I look forward to hearing from you in the comments below. All right, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.